You are listening to the PRO Media Network, the next level in entertainment. with the sports coma with Big Q and the guys. And we have intense, entertaining, educating, and enlightening sport talk from your favorite sports family. I'm Big Q, and on the line via Skype, got DC chiming in. What's going on, DC? Oh, everything. Everything, man. Some, some interesting, entertaining sports talk before we go into this training camp. Yeah, a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff going on there, my friend. A lot of stuff going on. But uh, that's what we're going to cover in today's podcast episode 201. That's right, 201 on the podcast. We're going to be covering Saints Mini Cap news updates. We're going to chime in as DC gives us a low down. We're going to talk about that camp news. And then we'll get into some of the Saints signings. Of course, the Saints were able to sign a few people. We'll tell you all about them. Um, also, they released a few guys. <laughs> We're gonna tell you about those guys as well, and some of the this, the signings and releasings as well. And we're gonna talk about also some injury news dealing with the camp mini camp coming into uh, the regular camp coming up real soon. And also, we'll break down and discuss some of the roles of some of these new signees that we have that's coming aboard uh, right about now. And um, also, this uh, we like to let everybody know out there across the sports coma fandom world and the Saints world. Uh, to we, we like thank you guys for supporting us over this transition, reaching over two hundred shows has been a major blessing, and we like to thank you in part because you are one of the major reasons why we're doing what we're doing. And as always, keep sharing the show, keep supporting us, keep going to Patreon and showing the love as we continue to build a platform moving into the future. So thank you very much. Also support the sponsors. And uh, like we said, share the show and uh, keep giving us thumbs up and and everything like that there. So uh, thank you for me and DC. But now, DC, let's get right into it, man, without any, with, uh, any further ado. Saints Minicamp, man, is, it came and went, bro. You know, it started a, a past the last Tuesday, uh, ended on Thursday. Of course, the Saints shut it down early. I guess Sean Payton seen enough uh, after shutting it down. Uh, the, the the Saints were able to make a few signings as well, bringing a few guys into the mini camp. Uh, Jamal Charles tried out. Tim Hightower came aboard. A few other notable names. DeMarco Murray, of course, declined to work out what? As, as well. So uh, very, very interesting news there as well. But before we get into more of the signings, give us some uh, breakdown on what happened at the Saints mini camp this time around. Well, the Saints minicamp, we had a, a strong showing, as you just stated, uh, obviously because they ended one day early. Uh, the linebackers definitely look good. Um, that's a lot of talk I was hearing. Marco Davis, uh, AJ Klein, and Alex Anzalone are, of course, projected to be the starters. And they all look good out there, man. Um, Taysom Hill, of course, looked pretty good uh, at times, kind of erratic. So, that was some some more, more talk because you know basically uh, the mini camp is basically just a bunch of passing, ain't no touching, uh, too much, ain't no pads on. So um, you got Alvin Kamari looking fresh. He was out there making plays. Michael Thomas was missing in action, so that was a uh, a lot of mystery involved in that. Um, we saw him one day on Monday. Uh, talk was he was walking to his car. He didn't look hurt or anything. Just never seen him anymore. As far as the mini camp, Cam Jordan wasn't there. Um, he had a, a baby, so congratulations to Cam Jordan. Um, he missed mini camp through that, but everybody else seemed to, to fill in fine. Um, your guy, your number one cornerback, <laughs> what's his name? 
Marcus Lattimore? No. <laughs> Can't crawl e before you walk e. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> he actually he had an interception, man. He looked pretty good in coverage out there. It's going to be, a, I guess, a battle, according to you, <laughs> for him to keep his number two slot. Um, nobody was going on Marcus Lattimore, of course. So it's pretty much what you would expect, man. We still got a lot of guys, uh, well, not a lot of guys, but a few guys uh, coming back from injury, like Cameron Meredith. He was out there making cuts, looking exceptionally well. He's on schedule to be back for training camp. And you had guys like Andrews Pete, of course, still not out there. Tyron Armstead looks fresh, man, looks healthy, no no tiredness, no limping around, no moping around. He looks 100%. So that is, that's amazing, man. And I think uh, with a combination of all the good news that I told you, as well as Mark Ingram finally showing up to uh, off-season team activities and everybody looked happy about that. Um, all these things mixed together, the good news, of course, is probably why Sean Payton decided to end, uh, end it you know, that Thursday without actually going a full day, you know, they still had to go and have a meeting, of course, but they didn't, they weren't out there in the Louisiana heat dealing with all that humidity. So I'm sure they were probably happy about that because everything seems to be on schedule. Very good. Um, and indeed it does look like everything is on schedule. Uh, the Saints, of course, you know, we're talking about the mini camp information here. Uh, DC's They're crossing our fingers with our rookie, though. I'm not hearing enough, uh, at least in the mini camp, about him. Well, you know, uh, like I said, man, we 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 is a lot of people agree with me out there that we are very we have a lot of depth at all the right places, uh, and also right. we we just the sports coma just released a new video depth chart. Uh, it's about five minute long. It breaks down. You got everybody on that sucker. A depth chart covering all of the uh, all of the Saints players. So you know it's five minutes. But if you haven't seen it, check it out. Uh, if you have, share it around. It's really it's really fun and interesting to see all of the players on the Saints entire roster in video form. It's pretty awesome. Uh, outside of that, a couple of little news uh, to go behind what DC was saying dealing with the camps. Terrence uh, West, former Baltimore back, Terrence West officially signed with the Saints. Of course, the Saints didn't sign Jamal Charles. They decided to go in a different direction. We already told you about DeMarco Murray declining to work out with other people. But the Saints also, they did sign Terrence West. In the next segment, we'll get into Terrence West and see what his effect is, what we think Terrence West's effect would be versus Mark Ingram. Uh, just a second, DC. Trevor, uh, Trevor uh, Darling, a former uh, offensive lineman who come over from the Miami Hurricanes, he signed and this mini camp as well. Uh, he played 46 games as a Miami Hurricane. He played offensive uh, tackle and offensive guard for the Hurricane. So that's a lot of uh, experience for a young guard, a young offensive lineman. So that's another addition to the uh, the offensive line as well. And of course, the Saints did sign Josh Schmidt, a wide receiver from the Tennessee Volunteers, uh, bringing him aboard. He had 63 passes. For six for seven hundred and sixty four yards and five touchdowns in his time at Tennessee, and the Saints bring him aboard as well. Now, uh, DC, we got about fifty seconds before we go into our first break. What's your question, brother? Well, you what's your take on the Demarco Murray situation? I love to hear uh, some professional analysis on that. I thought it was quite <laughs> funny that he didn't want to work out with other running backs. <laughs> I think the Mar- you know what you know, we ain't got enough talk about twenty five seconds man I'm gonna tell you everything <laughs> that I feel about Mr. Demarco Murray I'm gonna let it rip on the other side of the break but yes uh, when we come back on the other side of the break fans we're gonna talk about Demarco Murray we're gonna talk about uh, also if Terrence West cuts it up in the first uh, four games of the season is Mark Ingram in trouble we'll go and we'll break down yeah. that and give some more information that right as well <laughs> you're listening to the Sports Cobra with Big Q and the guys stay with us. Uh, uh, What's up, sports world? This Big Q from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Talking to you about the website, theposhlifestyle.com. That's right, poshlifestyle.com. A great website where you can get great products at great prices. They sell organic herbs, vitamins, supplements, water filters for your home, EMF and cell phone radiation protection. 
healing magnetics and healing crystals. Personal protection devices like cell phones, stun guns, and mace spray. Organic deodorants, shampoos, soaps, toothpaste, and more. They also sell 10A grade Brazilian hair. 10A music is available now. All kind of the latest downloadable mixtapes. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to theposhlifestyle.com. That's the posh lifestyle. Life spell with a Y. L Y F D style.com. Put in the sports coma for the 10% discount on your purchase. It's a win-win. So get your mind and body right with the posh lifestyle. Get all the latest news and updates from your New Orleans Pelicans at the Pelicans I Built. The new and official Pelicans Daily Journal, covering everything Pelicans. Attention, everyone. Get, get breakdown on games, free agent signings, and potential moves. Unbiased opinions and straight up facts with statistical analysis from G Balance. Go to www.thesportsdaily.com forward slash Pelicans dash I dash view. NBA fans, NBA League Pass is your ticket to all of this season's action. Every exciting matchup, every incredible shot, every big moment, every game live and on demand in HD quality on every type of device, wherever you are, whenever you want. NBA League Pass has you covered. Sign up today. Follow the Sports Coma on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. You're listening to the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys on the PRO Media Network. Welcome back to the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guy. We're talking about the Saints mini camp news. DC broke it down for us in the first segment of the show. This time around, we're going to delve into a little bit more uh, more different issues pertaining to Mr. Terrence West and his uh, his impact, if any, if he can actually do what we think he could do in those first four weeks as Mark Ingram in trouble. We'll answer that question. But first, before we get into that, uh, DC wants to know about the DeMarco Murray declining uh, to come uh, to train out for the Saints. And what, what my thoughts on it, of course, if everybody knew who I think, they're going to know what I'm going to say, but I'm just going to say it anyway. I think DeMarco Murray has a very high opinion of himself. Uh, I don't think DeMarco – I think DeMarco Murray needs to understand that uh, he has not he, – he's a guy that had an opportunity, and he probably wouldn't have, you, 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 he probably wouldn't end up getting signed by the Saints and probably could have been having a pretty decent time here. But the fact of the matter, DeMarco Murray is no way, shape, form, and fashion what he used to be. I mean, he's, I mean, for the last couple of years, he's been injured, injury riddled. I mean, it's, I just don't understand why the hell you wouldn't want to accept an invitation to come and try out for the Saints when they had way more productive backs than you. Jamal Charles was a guy who can, I guess you could say Jamal Charles was a guy that had a very good production over his years and could do a little bit real, right and do and can do a lot more things that he can't do jamal charles can actually re, uh, catch balls out the backfield he's more of a complete back than a demarco mario DeMarco so, ball he might be able to catch it but he can't do what jamal charles do he can't catch him like jamal charles do. so the bottom well, line I, is I Go ahead, I'm sorry. So Jamal, that's my I think DeMarco Murray. And it's good to have a high opinion in itself, but it's also to be realistic as well. And I think he just made a huge blunder by not taking an opportunity to try for the Saints. Because truth be told, he could have possibly he might end up actually getting a contract out of the deal. But you know, that's that's yeah. how the buck that's that's a decision that he'll never know, being that uh he gave it up. So who knows how it, it you know, but I don't see anything going forward from him. Tim Hightower came down here and tried out. Uh, Jamal Charles tried out the Saints, obviously went with Mr. Terrence West. And, D.C., let's kind of cruise right into Terrence West and talk about what Terrence West could bring to the team. We know Terrence – I want to comment on DeMarco Murray. Though. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. You gave me some ideas. Go ahead. But uh, what came to my mind was uh, a song from a long time ago, probably pre-Katrina from a New Orleans native called BG. <laughs> and in this song, he said, with your heart beating for you scared. That's, 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 that's just what I feel because when I think about it and uh, when you were talking, I thought about 
Henry, he lost his job to a dynamic second-year player in Henry that was pressing him for his job last year. And um, we got Alvin Kamara over here. I don't think he wanted no parts of that, man. I think he, he, he had a little flashback going on. He, he didn't want to try out with nobody else because he really didn't want to come here, man. I think the situation in, in itself is not something he's ready for. He want to go somewhere where he ain't got no threats. Uh, that's what I thought about. After hearing your commentary, of course, because uh, before that, I, I just was like, I, I don't get it. Like, why not come to the Saints, man? You can make starter money, splitting reps, extend your career. And, you know, basically, you possibly could get into the Pro Bowl. We got two running backs starting in the Pro Bowl. That could be you. Mr. Murray don't see it that way. He wants the whole – he don't want to share anything. He wants the whole situation to himself, and that's fine. He just uh, – Well, perhaps good, he luck never, good luck with that. Good luck with that, indeed. I look like Le'Veon Bell or uh, uh, David Johnson. So. Right, exactly. Good luck with that. <laughs> good luck with that one. But anyway, uh, let me let me hit you with some of our releases before we get into our Terrence West uh, breakdown. Um, a couple of releases the Saints did to bring in Trevor Darlin, the big offensive lineman from – the Miami Hurricanes, and Josh Schmidt, the wide receiver from Tennessee Falls. They did release D.C.'s favorite fullback, Ryan Juracek, and offensive lineman Corey Helms, who came from Tennessee. So um, that's a couple of the releases to bring a couple of those guys on aboard. Now, D.C., let's get to the Terrence West news. We talked about Terrence West early in the podcast, and I was look, had an opportunity to look at some stats from Mr. West. And uh, the guy is, 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 a, is a nice size back. You know, he's... Uh, He's about the same, almost the same. He's about the same stature, stature as uh, Mr. Mark Ingram. And if you look at one of his last and his best season, because he was injured in 2017, but the season before that in 2016, DC, he played 16 games, had 193 carries for 774 yards. He averaged four yards a carry, and he had five touchdown rushing touchdowns. In that year, also his receiving stats through those 16 games in 2016, he had 34 catches uh, for 236 yards and one touchdown. He averaged seven yards a catch in 2016. And prior to that, uh, his best season was his rookie year out of Cleveland when he ran for 673 yards and four touchdowns. His career numbers over five years, he's a third round pick by the Cleveland Browns out of Tolson. Uh, back in 2014, so he'd been in the league about five years now. And his right. career stats is 43. He has played in 43 games. He's had 465 rushing attempts for 1,816 yards with 11 rushing touchdowns. That's his rushing stats. DC 51 catches uh, for 344 yards and two touchdowns is his receiving stats. Now, the question I pose to you, DC, is is, is very blunt and simple. And I'm going to give you all the time to, to elaborate. If Terrence West, which I looked at his highlight film by your direction, the guy is is like a Mark Ingram clone, not to steal your thunder. But <laughs> let me ask you this. If this guy cuts up in the first four weeks of the season, what does is Mark Ingram in trouble? Hell yeah. Mark Ingram could possibly see himself uh, looking like the Adrian Peterson of this year. Uh, there's one thing we know, the Saints hate any type of distractions. Um, you had Kenny Vaccaro got suspended for Adderall, out of here. Adrian Peterson kind of sort of looked like he was causing dis- dis- uh, disruption, out of here. And you can follow the laundry list of guys that actually, I felt like uh, Jonathan Vilma and some of these other players that, that got penalized uh, during the Bounty Gate scandal. And they may very well have not even did anything wrong. But guess what? They all were out of here. So uh, Mark Ingram, I don't, I definitely don't see him bucking that trend. If Terrence West comes out there and looks like anything remotely close to him, uh, if Terrence West comes out in these four games, let's say he averages 60, 70 yards a game, and he gives you three or four touchdowns out of them four games, not looking too good for Mark Ingram. Not looking good for Ingram at all. I have to agree with you on that, my friend. I think that if if West comes out and a lot of people say, man, you're crazy, we love Mark Ingram, y'all, listen, that's sentimental attachment, y'all. 
This remember yeah. football is a business. They don't say though. we hate more games. Like we don't like more games. Right. It, it, but I, that's the same thing I keep saying. People when we said the whole thing about Darius Geis, remember we the one that started all that about Darius Geis when we started talking right. about it. It looked like we should have we should have uh, drafted Darius Geis. We, we should have gave up a second round draft pick or something from the next year. We should have went got Darius Geis. It, it probably wouldn't be having this conversation right now. Would not be having this conversation at all because you would pair Darius Geis with Elvin Kamara and that. We, well, I don't even have to go that way because uh, uh, that's just that's something we said. But we knew. Five, six, seven years, but that goes to show you that we, like we've been doing for the last three years, we've been running right ahead of the curb when we talk about these issues because how ironic it is we talk about getting Darius Geis to replace Mark Ingram and then all this stuff jump off for of Mark Ingram right after Darius Geis. But they knew. And they could have pulled the, the, the plug on it, but we we didn't know what they knew, but we knew deep down inside that we needed to make well, a move on that. I think they had their eyes on Boston Scott, and I think that's also we always have a player uh, every couple of years or so that just come out of nowhere like gangbusters, like Alvin Kamari. Uh, Sean Payton loves running backs, always has. So I think Boston Scott maybe they were a little more intrigued by what he can do all around. And so they, they elected not to give up a commodity next year for Darius Geis. But I know Darius Geis definitely had to be on the board. No doubt about it, DC. Very good analysis, my friend. Uh, let's move into our next subject of discussion. Remember Davenport? Let's talk about Marcus Davenport. He had that thumb surgery. Now, of course, um, he said it wasn't nothing to worry about. It was very minuscule or whatnot. And when we seen him, we seen him. Uh, his his hand in the cast, his thumb was wrapped up, very minor surgery, they're saying to replace the thumb. Uh, didn't get much information about where how he hurt his thumb or whatnot, but of course he's saying that it won't uh, stop him going forward or stop him from attending camps or whatnot. So he was, of course, in the mini camp. You can see his thumb was wrapped up and everything, but that's just a little word of caution on Mr. Davenport to make mention of that surgery as he described it as very minor surgery, nothing to be worried about, nothing to be concerned about. DC, we got about a little less than three minutes left to go in this segment. Talk to me about the Saints. They had some guys went into the Saints Hall of Fame. My friend, you want to break that down? Well, you, you, you didn't throw a curveball on me. I thought I was about to say something about Davenport. <laughs> oh, you, me, want, uh, you want to add something to Davenport? Go right on ahead, my friend. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, from what I heard about the injury and, and looking at training camp, he was still out there getting work in. Right. And his, and his finger is tore up. So, to me, I, I would say it definitely can't be that serious. If he was still out there um, going through all the team practice without any, you know, pretty much any side effects. So, I think he's definitely going to come on out the other end of that. Ain't going to be no big deal. But moving on to the Saints Hall of Famers, new Saints Hall of Famers, Pierre Thomas and Lance Moore, man. A long time coming for these dudes, man. I, th- I think that is a very classy move. And I couldn't think of a better offseason to do it, um, knowing that the Saints could be possibly in the Super Bowl this year with the team that they've assembled. So, um, these guys, respectively, 40 and 39 touchdowns in their career each. Um, it was it was a staple and a very prominent foundation in us winning the Super Bowl. I don't know if everybody uh, remembers in the Saints Nation that both of these guys are undrafted. And they came and both of them, man, I mean, similar production from both of these guys. And they, they both had a similar impact different areas on the team but without them I could really say we probably wouldn't have won that Super Bowl we needed them just as much as say uh, a Reggie Bush who was in the first round draft pick you know so I'm, I'm glad to see those guys get inducted in man and I think it's a beautiful day for them so they'll be at championship square you gonna see them up there big ups to Lance Moore and Mr. Pierre Thomas, man, for doing it big for all those years and their great contributions to New Orleans Saints, and especially uh, helping obtain our first and not and, and uh, first Super Bowl here. Now let's get into the injury news right before we get up out of here. Uh, we got a few things to mention on the injury situation. 
uh, Andrews Pete, Cam Mer- Meredith, and Alex Okafor all are going to be ready uh, for when a big meat and potato action start. Uh, so a lot of people have been they keeping an eye on them. So that's right. Cross your fingers, man. Cross your fingers, man. So we, so, all on schedule. So we all on schedule. Cam, Cam Meredith is beyond schedule. So we you know I, I'm not even concerned yeah. but so we got a lot of uh, insurance on uh, with the pass rushers as far as dab uh, with uh, Alex Okafor as dab and Poise, a bunch of guys as well to kind of fill in on that side of things and Andrews Pete is the real issue a lot of people looking at Andrews Pete hoping he can come back 100% as well so that's going to do it for the show here this- we're trying real hard to be ready yeah, man. oh yeah we definitely need Andrews there but this will do it for the show we appreciate y'all guys for chiming in tonight on the Sports Coma episode 201 on the Coma thank y'all for joining us today as always if you enjoyed the show please hit the notification share like and, and, and remember sharing is caring here at the Sports Coma so you can make sure you share the sports coma with your friends and family members and other who that's across the who that nation say listen man we like these guys so much here yeah, listen to them and stop listening to them old boring lame guys out there but uh also if you also support the platform please feel free to donate at the patreon page at www.patreon.com slash the pro media network and make a donation to help us out to build a platform as well and also thank you for joining us tonight on the sports coma from me in dc Peace. Hey. Forget ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Thank you for listening to the Pro Media Network, who provides hours and hours of free entertainment to you and yours. If you are benefiting positively from our content, please donate to help us grow our platform by going to www.patreon.com slash the Pro Media Network. That's www.patreon.com slash the Pro Media Network. And support the true independent artists.